and right now in the UK, you also have practicing a very strict lockdown practice that says if it's a necessary reason, it's not courage people to go outside. Therefore, today we invite the ambassador to the United, to United Kingdom, Mr. Liu Xiaoming, and also the A representatives of the A overseas students to have a online discussion. Ambassador Liu, hello to all viewers and also the A students in United Kingdom. And right now we also can see the representatives of the overseas students in the UK. So if you would like to say anything, please raise your hands and ask the question to the ambassador, because we also have a people in the queue. There's a long queue waiting to get the opportunity to talk to the ambassador Liu. So any remarks from Mr. Liu? Thank you very much. Very glad to have this very special opportunity amid this crucial time period to talk to our overseas students. Actually, this is my second time in three days to conduct this kind of online communication. Monday this week, actually, I had a ceremony to send the a caring package to the overseas Chinese. I also would like to convey the kind care of the Chinese government. We want to say that your safety and health always in the a people's heart back at hometown in China. The embassy to the United Kingdom always at your back. And the a head of states has had a phone communication two days ago, and that's the a second time happened this month. Then the a presidency emphasizes that the a Chinese government always touched great importance on the safety and health of the overseas Chinese in the United Kingdom, and also to urge the a UK side to take a good measures to protect the illegitimate rights and the interests of the overseas Chinese, especially our overseas students. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson also responded to the presidency that they will do a good job to protect the safety and health of the overseas Chinese, especially our students. Right now, you can see the situation of a pandemic spreading so fast, and that is why you can see the upgrading measures been taken in the UK. Talk about it should not be the a public gathering happened, especially if that the a gathering for more than two people, and also shut down the public areas. We would like to see all these measures will work. And also the older students, please follow the practice and measures right now going on in the United States. As we mentioned, China actually look at back to our history. We have experienced so many turbulent difficulties in our history, but we never ever bowl in front of the difficulties, and we will for sure overcome all these challenges. So the pandemic this time we can consider as a test. Also, the opportunity for us to showcase our solidarity and perseverance. Therefore, we should stay confirm, stay committed, stay with strong confidence that we will for sure overcome the pandemic this time and create the a strong and in the a strength that we will for sure will win the battle. And for the embassies in the United States, we will f the, in the UK, we will provide the guarantee to all the overseas Chinese. And if you need any help, we're always there to help you. So we have the A consulate in Manchester, and the consulate in Belfast. 
and we will all work together. The embassy to the UK and the three consulates will work together to protect the legitimate rights and interests of all our students. So talk about late Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Actually, it's the biggest challenge right now we are facing over decades. And the upcoming breaking news just happened. Prince Charles has tested positive for coronavirus. So, Ambassador Liu, your takes? We can see that right now we are in a crucial stage. As you mentioned, this, the uh, numbers right now in UK, the confirmed cases actually rank number nine in the, around the world, number six in the United States in the uh, Europe and we talk about right now people in the UK started to take this issue seriously. Yesterday the also mentioned that the a retired Maddox and uh, go back to the eight uh, positions. And right now, we also have seen that over 250,000 volunteers will be in the helping position, uh, as well as the military, and uh, more than 200,000 soldiers involved, as well as the uh, public security personnel all stay on call. And they also said that during the phone call conversation, Prime Minister John Boris Johnson said that they would like to learn from China. So right now you can see the also the a uh, runaway one of the a uh, conventional center to the uh, makeshift hospital with the a uh, more than four thousand beds available. So right now the situation in the UK is quite uh, prominent, and also the a uh, coming. News just happened. The virus respects no borders and respects the a virus actually respects no nationalities. So you can see the prime, Prince Charles actually is also have to confirm the positive to the virus. And today the a parliament will close amid the epidemic and also is forbidden to have a public gathering with more than two people. So the floor is open. We can see we only have one gentleman, right? And Mr. John from Glasgow. So you go first. Ambassador Liu, my name is Zhang Tong and from the University of Glasgow, where I'm now studying my master degree. My family member always asks me that uh, we talk about the a so-called herd immunity. So is it really that we should be cool to the virus? But on the other hand, you can see right now the upgrading all these protective measures. So how can we understand the so-called herd immunity? This, yes, the a chief scientist first initiated this word. But actually, you can see this is a quite technical term. Uh, the Minister of Health actually came out to say that we should not really follow the a technical terminology, or this is more considered like a medical concept. So you can see right now, no one really mentioned about this terminology anymore. So look at all the matters right now they are practicing. You can see this is a all round upgrading. So you talk about whether all these matters will work. We still need to wait and see. We hope so. Finger crossed, but actually anything that take effect need to go to practice for some time. So with the development of the a pandemic, 
the UK side will take maybe even more stringent measures, and they will put a close eye on the whole situation. So next, Lu Yong from London. So I'm from the AA Shanghai and also studying my master degree here in London in the Imperial College. So my friends and I decided to stay here in the United States, in the UK and we actually also follow the practice in, the, in China and we right now taking good care of ourselves and we have a confidence in the capability here in the UK and we also actually quite confident that if anything happened, our motherland, China, will always try different ways to save us. So my parents actually also quite support us, support me, and we also talk about in the next 12 weeks, we may see some turning point happen here. But of course, the premise is that everyone should practice, follow the order. So first of all, I would like to give you a thumbs up for your courage and determination. And so it's not really wise to take a long trip. So the thing really happened is that the overseas students really hurried to go back home. So the a cross infection might have might be happened, especially if they need to like, go to the different countries. So there were no direct flights, and the a some the a students actually quarantined in the third countries, and the whole condition in the third country cannot compare to China and the UK. So the a Chinese embassy in that third country provided that needed equip the a supplies like the a daily necessities like courses, but the thing is that the a exposure to coronavirus or we talk about the cross infections is really possible. That is why. I really like your decision that you would like to stay in London. Back to the a 12 week, maybe, but the thing is like they show that promising. They show their promise and they think that all these merits, of course, we always talk about all these on the basis that everyone in the UK follow all the instructions. And you can see the a quarantine. We talk about the a social distancing. This actually all the a good practice learned from China. So we talk about if, let's say, everything goes well, every people behave themselves, we will for sure see a promising turning point. But. If people not really follow the instructions, then it's quite hard to see whether it take 12 weeks or how long it will take to reach the peak. Still, right now, the whole situation of pandemic in the UK is quite severe. So it's really call on everyone to follow the instructions and the plans made by the UK government. That is why I also would like to say to all our overseas Chinese students, Please protect yourself and follow the instruction. And a couple of days ago, we also saw the a pictures that in the subway is still that the a large number of people crowded in the subway in their metros. Uh, no one really wearing masks. So still rely on two friends first. The government should take more stringent measures. And second, uh, people not really listen to their government. So you can see Prime Minister Boris Johnson had a 
speech on TV says it's not for yourself, for your relatives, for your family, for the whole people in the UK. You need to make some sacrifice. So you can see less vehicles run on the road and old schools shut down. And the people, you can see they're like running and they actually run in a group, in a pair actually. And we talk about you cannot really run by yourself. It's better to run with one of your families. We do see that a family of four members walk on the street. But we will see right now the whole public start to learn and understand how serious the pandemic is. This is a two-way understanding. First, the a government will for sure the a taking more stringent measures. And second, the whole public need to raise their awareness. And I believe next will be Zhang Jing, right? Zhang Jing from Manchester. And right now, um, Pursuing my doctor degree in the University of Manchester. So the actually we have a quite good communication with the a embassy to the UK as well as consulate. So the a embassy will release the updated information regarding how to protect ourselves on the website since the outbreak of the pandemic. Chinese embassy and the consulate always touch great importance on the safety and health of our overseas Chinese. I especially, our special focus goes to our students. Why? Because we always consider our students more vulnerable. And let's say at the total number of Chinese in all, around 600,000. And for the overseas students, it's around 220,000. And the people for tourism, for working, will be the rest of the population. For overseas Chinese, they have been living in the UK for many decades. And we talk about the students. Actually, we not really belong to any the organization. Uh, of course, we have like the a student organization, but still we need to give more care to our students. That is why President C emphasizes in his phone conversation with Prime Minister Boris Johnson that we should do a good job to protect students in the UK. And the, a foreign minister, Wang Yi, also emphasized this point when he had a phone conversation with his counterpart from the UK. So the protection of our overseas Chinese students always in our key concern, and we always send the a alert or the a notice to our students. Right now, we just released the a one notice to all the students that what you need to consider when you go on a long journey, because the a cross infection happened. That is why we would like to call on everyone's attention on the a long distance trip. And uh, so I also would like to say that for the ODA Chinese students to the UK, the Chinese embassy as well as our three consulate has the a 24 hours hotline available. So please always to find the a updated information on our official website. And also please follow me on my Twitter as well. We will also will disclose the updated information via Twitter. So we talk about the any 
thing that quite concerned you. So before actually we organized a Richard group that consisting six universities in the UK, and there is one key issue is that the shortage of PPE that it really concerned everyone. So we heard that right now the a embassies doing the work regarding the PPE package. Yes, the Chinese government really concerned the safety and the health of our students. That is why we would like to send out this we call the healthy package to our students in the UK, such as the a N95 mask, a normal mask, as well as surgical mask and TCM. And also in the package, we also have the a disinfection wipe, as well as the a hand book. We would like to give this healthy package to all the overseas students in the UK. And the Chinese government also considered to send a joint working group to the United Kingdom to visit our overseas students and also answer some your questions regarding the treatment, regarding pandemic prevention and control, as well as psychological issues. We'll keep you updated. And for the a student union, the unions, student unions of EU, the United Kingdoms will also release all this updated information. So I will also appreciate the hard work made by the student unions. So once again, right now the whole situation is quite severe. So if you need to go outside, please, please protect yourself. So, so far, we asked four questions to our ambassador, and also let's invite the another two students in the pipeline. Liu Yihan, your turn. Hello to all. So I'm the a, a teacher in the Confucius College in the in London. So we conducted the a campaign to promote the, a traditional Chinese culture. So the f we talk about the PPE actually the a Peking Dancing University actually sent the a group of the supplies to us, and we. Also received the supplies signed to by the a Confucius College from other places, and talking about how we can better deliver the protective supplies to the United Kingdom, and we also talk about whether we can open a green channel, especially to mile the a ready-made TCM and Western medicine. So that regards to the mailing the a medicine to the UK. So right now we still rely on the a third party, the very professional delivery company, because the UK side has quite strict requirement on imported medicine. Right now in the UK, the express delivery, the postal office actually is still operating. And also just I mentioned the a healthy packages also will be delivered and sent out by the postal office and the delivery company. And if you really would like to receive the a parcel containing medicine, please first go to the 
Express Company and for the, a further approval. And we also have the a parents of the a younger overseas students. We talk about actually all these younger overseas students refer to the overseas students in the elementary school or secondary school in the UK. Right now, actually, this group of num people around 150,000. So we talk about normally during the weekend or school breaks, the group of students actually is homestay in the a local houses. So right now all the school closed. And we talk about majority of these homestay actually is the elderly people's home. So we right now the a consulates and our embassy try to find the a agency to help to make the hospitality or special arrangement for our younger overseas students. And because that right now in the UK, uh, people above 70 years old they need to do a home, stay home quarantine. So we need to think about a place for these homestay students, really understand their parents, really eager to know whether their keys are safe, uh, or whether they can really have a chartered flight to send their keys back home. We talk about before the pandemic, the a uh, flights between China and the UK every week is more than 1,600. Right now, this number actually dropped sharply. So we talk about this group of students. Actually, it's the largest number around the world. I believe that we will make all the efforts to help these students and their parents solve these questions. As we mentioned, the, a, by a, the a direction flights, we talk about whether we can arrange a special or charter flights for these overseas young students. Is the work is still undergoing, but it's actually involved in different departments different authorities, and also for these group of uh, the young kids from uh, the UK to China, actually at least 10 hours flight. So how to take care of this group of students during the flight and how to really protect their safety. But still, we talk about their average age around 10 years old, actually, the majority of them actually under the age 14, we will very soon to find a solution. And maybe let Xie Xuan, you go first. Xie Xuan from Belfast. Hello to all. My name is Xie Xuan from Guangdong province. Right now, I'm studying a economics in the University of Belfast in my second year in the university. So we talk about right now the a students. First, we're quite concerned about our the a studies and also we are worried about our health. And also some of my classmates already back to China. So we are a little bit worried about visa. So the a visits or the a study permit. So can we still apply the a study permit and to continue our study in the university? So this is a very good question. As I mentioned, the long distance flight 
may have a quite a high possibility of a cross infection. And you also need to stay in quarantine for additional time period in China or maybe in the third country for the students if you have not yet finished your school please first communicate with your schools for further arrangement so we talk about if the international students department learned your situation they will also would like to help you to apply the student permit so for the short term, right now, the some of these facilities actually shut down, suspended for a short time period. If, let's say, you got a approval by your school, but you still have difficulty to apply visa, please let the embassy know your situation. Uh Regarding visa or the student permit. One question from our viewers regarding the extension about a, a visa or the student permit. So what's the a situation? So right now we are working with the UK side, especially the Ministry of the interior to deal with the a visa, especially the valid time period of the visa for our students. So we right now had a close communication with the UK side. We will up you, update you for the a further information. All right, then, Zeng Yan. Hello to all from the uh, University of Zhongwu. From the University of the A. Southampton, and also the A. News happened that the A. Situation happened is the A. Discrimination against Chinese or the Asian people. So the, for these kind of the incident that happened in the UK, how we can deal with it. This is a serious situation, although right now just a single case that the a one of our overseas students, Chinese students, actually was bitten by the a people in the UK. We talk about actually the a British people and the government actually learned a lot about the a good matters that this time were taken to fight against the COVID-19 and actually we also talked to the UK side to better protect our students and also this kind of the a discrimination cases. So we talk about first, please protect yourself. If the argument or the a, anything happened, please protect yourself, stay them away. Let's say if the this kind of situation happened, that's bitten by the local people, please 
let your university know the information and also please call the police and also like the embassy or the consulate know the situation and we will also call the authorities to protect your safety and also please please always stay closely and stay in a good communication with the a student federation or student union and please do not go outside alone we talk about not courage to do a public gathering but these two people go outside is okay so we suggest that please if you need to go outside take someone with you so we have a, a student from University of Duran they have a confirmed case happened so the talk about that they would like to let the students say in a designated dormitories for better management so this situation did happen we talk about the a large group of people living in the same place may trigger the a possibility of a cross infection we talk about we encourage social distancing and first we should follow the instructions of keeping that social distancing and we talk about maybe it's not a good practice by pulling students together to live in a certain designated dormitories because that's really a large group of people and if that is the case uh, first of all do not have the a sharp argument with your schools and also the embassies and consulates will also help you to negotiate with the UK side, the Ministry of Education, and also please talk to the A Students Federation. So the consulate, embassy, the A Students Unions were all involved. And also please, please always stay alert, protect yourself. And also, if you encountered any difficulties or any issues, please let us know. Let the consulate and embassy know your situation. So if you have any difficulties, any issues, please always notice the embassy. So we talk about that the, uh, some people from the United States call it Chinese virus. So what's the attitude here in the United Kingdom and how the a society in the UK consider about this? Uh, first of all, it's totally not acceptable. Uh, political size the virus or the practice stigma. State Councillor Wang Yi emphasizes he's having a phone call with his counterpart. We talk about the UK side also talk about they will go against stigma. And they will not politicize the virus. And that is the a mainstream here in the United Kingdom. And we also publish the articles in the newspaper here in the UK. And some media right in the UK, for example, BBC, in their website, they mentioned for the very first time a Chinese virus. So we sent the a notice to BBC and they corrected right away. WHO named the coronavirus as COVID-19. 
在英国的中国公民，就是在，因为。So for the Chinese in the UK right now, not bothered by the stigma, but if you encounter this kind of situation, or your schools use this term in the published documents or announcement, please let us know. For someone, they would like to provoke the whole situation in, by intentionally using this word. Please let us know. So we also have a question online saying that DEA, they would like to send their kids to UK for education, what they need to take into consideration. We talk about Prime Minister is quite optimistic that in within 12 weeks, yes, 12 weeks, but someone says maybe 12 months. We talk about maybe we will see the turning point next summer. We don't know, but it's better to listen to the scientists. You look at actually on the podium, you see the Prime Minister and also you can see the a chief scientist as well as chief medic. Actually, we talk about that the a method actually right now they are taking in the UK is based on science. So we talk about how long the pandemic last in the UK when it will reach peak, or when is the time we'll see the turning point, we don't know. But the parents can make some arrangement and a plan. If you would like to send your kids to the UK, because still Olympic, Summer Olympic postponed for one year. So you need to also leave some buffered time period for the overseas study plan. So my suggestion is please keep a close eye on the development of pandemic in the UK and also make some flexibility on your plan. We talk about actually our live stream You see a joint prevention and control. The a Chinese side actually have sent the group of experts and the medics to the other countries. Uh, and the, the UK side asked for help regarding the a pandemic prevention and control. Actually, we had a quite good cooperation between both sides. The head of states actually keep a really good communication and a close contacts that the a two phone call conversation happened within one month. We've never seen this before because the, the, the happened at a very special time period. And also the UK side speak, spoke highly about the a Chinese speed and Chinese efficiency. And also the a second phone con conversation also mentioned that they really like to learn the a Chinese experience. And also during the phone call conversation between the state councillor Wang Yi and the UK side, had a, a phone conversation happen regularly. And from the a embassy level, actually, we also have the a good communication with the UK side. With different ministries. That's the more the official government levels. And you talk about the a disease prevention control and the medical treatment. Actually, we already shared our seventh edition of the a diagnosis and treatment protocols. And actually, the UK side also sent their experts to join the a panel discussion with the Chinese side regarding the medical treatment. And the scientists from both sides are now working around the clock to develop the vaccines. Cambridge, Oxford, 
Actually, had a quite good chemicals going on with the Chinese side, and that's also based on our quite the good cooperation in the previous stages. And actually, I also talked to the a different UK companies, and they are saying that they are also working closely with the Chinese businesses regarding the vaccine research and development. So we talk about the a cooperation around the vaccine is the a priority, the top priority right now going on between both sides. And the UK side actually signed two batches of urgently needed medical supplies to China, to Wuhan. Right now we can see the overall situation in China has seen a good progress. And it's the turn for China to pay back to the UK side. And the a presidency in the phone conversation with Boris Johnson saying that if you need our help, we are always ready to give you the help. And we also talk about how we can better strengthen the cooperation around the world regarding the a public health emergency, because for China and UK are the two permanent member of the a UN embassy, as well as the a other international institutions such as G20. I believe this time the both sides can work together, can play a leading role in the health emergency response system. So talking about the cooperation, we talk about the a telecommunication actually always a hot debated topic going on between both sides. So Xi Jun, what's your take in this regard? Signals. Wi-Fi, I believe, is not that fast compared to China. Like Belfast, I think maybe our location quite near the sea or mountain. We know China right now is building their 5G infrastructure. And also it's sometimes quite hard for me to get access to Wi-Fi in my schools. I believe there's something a room for improval. I see our students nodding their heads. I believe maybe you encountered more or less the same situation. I believe that's maybe another area for further cooperation between both sides. The UP side actually made a quite wise decision that they would like to work closely with China. We know the U.S. side gave a big pressure to the U.K., their allies, but still Prime Minister Boris Johnson made a really wise decision. Of course, it's not 100 percent satisfied by the Chinese side, we talk about doing uh, some restrictions on Huawei, as the a cap, the setting the cap, or the a ceiling of the a market share in more than 35 percent, but still we look at their um, the ambitious goal is that it would like to realize a 5G full coverage in the UK by around the year 2025. We talk about only Huawei can help you to reach this goal. Because Huawei is the big name and the leading company in 5G development. They actually made their presence in the UK for two decades. So I believe the decision made by the UK government is first based on their own interest and second is the, because of their open economy, is free trade, free investment. I told them that if you reject Huawei, it impacts your interests as well as your image. 
We would like to see a win-win cooperation. We talk about Great Britain. We talk about uh, the Great Britain, and that's the island of Great Britain, because they have that word great. Right. So only you have a independent foreign policy can you become even greater. Because in your name, you call yourself a Great Britain. So that is why we emphasize a lot on the role that Huawei can play and the a contribution that Huawei can make to the a telecommunication industry development. I believe for our next time, if you have this kind of online communication, we will for sure enjoy better signal. So we talk about a lot of our viewers actually ask many questions online. They also have some discussions going on, talk about whether the overseas students need to go back home. We talk about right now, look at China, actually. We have seen an increasing number of imported cases. And also a lot of case actually from the UK. What's your take? So I believe this is quite understandable, but we should consider the pandemic in a scientific and rational manner. As I just mentioned, the WHO already gave the warning that it is not discouraged for people to take a long, uh, long distance trip. Especially that long, that long journey, you need to transfer in different cities because that's really risky. All right, we believe 5G should play its role next time for a better, smooth signal. So just the ambassador, you mentioned whether students need, can go back home or not. For the students right now join our live streaming, they still stay in the UK. And also WHO suggests that people is not good to take a long distance journey because that have a quite high possibility of exposure to the virus. So while we are waiting Ambassador Liu back online, we talk about, let's talk to the other students. So we talk about actually a lot of cases happened, especially for the a cross infections that happened. And we also talk to the a female students uh, just got back to China and, and it's a really difficult, exhausted journey I can say because you could like you need to wear the a protective suits for let's say 10 hours and not really allow you to eat to drink I believe actually we have seen that from our media coverage. Actually, see the a students actually back home. They first need to stay in the quarantine for an additional 14 days, and this is really a difficult journey, very challenging. Uh, they need to wear uh, gloves, look at the goggles, the protective suits. Uh, welcome back, Ambassador Liu. 
We look at the situation right now in China. We have seen and we can understand that a pandemic, and we talk about the coronavirus, actually is controllable, curable. Uh, right now, we can see the a makeshift cabin hospital also is under construction here in UK, and also look at their DA testing capability of the PCR right now already increased to a 10,000 people per day. Their goal is well soon to improve, increase this number to. 25,000. And the UK side is also welcome the good practice in China. And we know that the UK side will take a step further to contain the pandemic. And we would always like to say that once again, please protect yourself well and always stay close to the a student federation, student unions, and consulate, as well as embassy. So we talked about last time when Ambassador Liu had a phone conversation with Bai on a uh, TV uh, show. Uh, I'll uh, give you 20 minutes for wrap up. So Ambassador Liu, right now you have more than 20 seconds. Any words? So we talk about three things for our students. The first, please, uh, the, be the contributor, the uh, pandemic containment effort, and please always make your contribution for the further cooperation between China and the UK. And also, please stay confident and pursue your dream to make your contribution to the development of bilateral ties. China this time once again showcase that we are a responsible major country and we should be proud of our motherland. So please stay committed and stay confident, stay encouraged and you will for sure to pay more contribution to the country once you finish your study. And we also would like to see that day happen as early as possible. And that's also to convey the message to the UK side that the pandemic is temporary, short life. What we need to think about is let's carry forward the fun tradition of China work together with the UK side to give your care kind to our Chinese students in the UK as well as show your care and love to the people in the UK. And we look at the pandemics quite spreading fast in the UK, but based on the China's experience is controllable, containable, and curable. So everything should be based on science. Do not fabricate rumors and do not spread virus, the A spread, the rumors. And it's not recommended to take a long distance journey because that's a high response, the a possibility of a cross infections. Please manage your time, manage your study, a friend indeed is a friend in need. We had full confidence that we will for sure win the battle against COVID-19 pandemic and to secure a final victory. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ambassador, because this has really happened in a crucial time period. And I believe this is a really a great time happened for the past one hour. And thank you for your suggestions and the message. I believe our students already read down the message that Ambassador Liu gave to you. Thank you, everyone. This is a really 
um, be a memorable time. Thank you all. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Time flies. And Ambassador answered many questions asked by the overseas Chinese students and also the uh, viewers online. And so far, actually, we invited the uh, ambassadors to the United States and the UK to answer the questions. And uh, going forward, we will invite the, a more representatives of overseas Chinese and overseas students to conduct this kind of online.